from a world-ending apocalypse to yet more timeline jumps and shenanigans, the third season of the Umbrella Academy ends on a huge cliffhanger and a big reveal about Reginald Hargreaves. yippee ki -yay, movie lovers, I'm Jan, and in this video I'm explaining everything you need to know about the ending of season 3, what the deal was that Alison made, and why we're likely getting doppelgangers in season 4. Spoilers ahead of course, so take care. When the Umbrella Academy arrived back in 2019 to find themselves replaced by the Sparrows, on the same day they arrived, a Kugel Blitz, a type of black hole, appeared in the basement of the Sparrow Academy. You see, when they travel back to the 60s, they inadvertently transferred powers to a young Harlan, who, as he grew up, found himself connected to other powered people. When his mother, Sissy, died on the 1st of October 1989, it was the same day the Umbrella Academy's mothers were due to give birth. As the super babies grew inside them, Harlan sensed their pain, and when this combined with his grief over Sissy's death, he accidentally killed them, preventing the Umbrella Academy team from ever being born. So when the gang arrive in this new timeline, they shouldn't actually exist, and this creates a version of the grandfather paradox. A paradox? You mean one of those things that can destroy the universe? The threat the Kugel Blitz poses to the entire cosmos now explains why the Commission was so alarmed when they found out about Harlan's powers in the second season. I've never seen anything like this. The anomaly is off the charts. The Kugel Blitz is unstoppable without going back in time to prevent their mothers being killed, which is impossible as the only two commission briefcases are broken. The only remedy lies in the Hotel Oblivion. The Oblivion is located in an alternate dimension, a nod to how the hotel in the comics exists in a pocket dimension and was used by Hargreaves as a prison for villains. And the numerous cockroaches that keep popping up are a reference to how the critters were served to the prison at the hotel in the comics. In the TV show, the Oblivion contains a machine that can rebuild the universe should it ever be destroyed. The machine is activated by the Seven Bells, which it turns out are seven of the surviving team. And when they stand on the stars on the floor of the hotel's lobby, they create the sigil which unlocks the machine. The Oblivion then reveals that it's basically an illusion for a Matrix-like machine that controls the reality of the world. Another cool detail here is the hotel floor tiling that creates an optical illusion, another pointer to the Hotel Oblivion's perception and reality-altering powers. The machine then begins to pull sparks of light out of the seven members of the team, something that Allison protests as it appears to be about to kill them. The particles inside their bodies are the only things that fuel the machine. Now, these flecks of light are the ones that Hargreaves released a long time ago back on his home world, and the opening scene of season three confirms that they are indeed the thing that miraculously impregnated numerous women around the world who on the same day all gave birth to superpowered children. And this makes me think it was part of Hargreaves' plan to use humans as vessels for transferring the magical lights from his home world, eventually all the way to the Hotel Oblivion, where he could then extract them to power up the engine that would recreate the cosmos. With access to the machine, I think then he programmed the rebirth of the universe in a way that would prevent the apocalypse on his home planet and the death of his wife. After all, remember what he said. I've seen worlds end in ways that would knock your socks off. But you'll never forget your first, your home, your original sin. You'll never stop wondering, did I do enough to save the people I loved? Did you? No, but I was hoping you children could help me out with that. Season 3 also revealed that bringing his wife back to life has been a huge driving force for Hargreaves when we discover that he was keeping her body cryogenically frozen in a container on the moon. He even sent Luther there for four years on an unexplained mission to keep her safe. You wasted my life on the moon, and for what? I left you to guard the most precious thing in the universe. I even suspect that Hargreaves himself may have cycled through various loops in time in order to figure out what combination of events would eventually lead him to discover the key to fixing the universe in his favour. In Season 1's flashback to Hargreaves' arrival in America, we can see from the immigration stamp that this was 1928. But in Season 3, we discover Hargreaves was already on Earth in 1918, looking for the portal to the alternate dimension. Even after uncovering the portal, his attempts to get safe access inside were thwarted by the Guardians protecting the other side. And when he saw how a group of trained soldiers were so easily defeated by the samurai warriors, that might have led him to the idea that he needed a group of extraordinary super-powered individuals for the task. For that, he might have gone back again in time to release the magical lights, and since then, he's gone through many cycles of different super-babies and children until finding the seven who would become the Seven Bells. 
Another big clue to Hargreaves' secret time travel shenanigans is the fact there's a Televator sign hidden in the basement of the Sparrow Academy. In the comics, the Televator is a contraption that can travel across space, time and dimensions, and in the season 2 60s timeline, we saw that Hargreaves had blueprints in his office for building a Televator. As he said to Five, he's witnessed numerous apocalypses before, so perhaps that's how he's escaped through time and space on several occasions. And if you like this theory or this video so far, hit that like button, I really appreciate it. But what was the deal that Alison made with Reginald on the night of Luther and Sloane's wedding? I think she offered to unite her side of the family by reconciling with them the following day, then trying to convince them to join Hargreaves' mission to the Oblivion. Although that didn't exactly work, she had tried, and so once on the other side, in return, perhaps out of some slight empathy for her given his mission was also to recover his lost love, Hargreaves programmed the new universe so that she could have the two cherished things she'd lost in all the timeline changes, her daughter Claire from 2019 and her husband Ray from the 60s. I'm almost done and when I am, you and I will get what we came here for. This new universe is Alison's idealised world where her mistakes and problems from the previous two seasons are now gone. In season one, after Alison's husband Patrick found her using her powers on their daughter, he divorced her and took custody of Claire. And in season two, she had to leave her husband Ray, who she'd fallen in love with, so that she could travel back to the future. Now, in this new and improved timeline, Alison has managed to get the two people she loves from different times in one place. Reginald too got what he was finally after and created a world where not only is his wife Abigail still alive, but once more he's a billionaire with what looks like an even bigger business empire this time. As for Alison's siblings, they emerge in the new world dramatically changed. Luther has lost his simian body, Diego's fingers that were sliced off by one of the Guardians have returned, and Five also has both his arms. The wrinkle, however, is that they don't have their powers anymore. I can't blink. Now, it's possible that they lost their abilities when the particles were extracted out of them by the Oblivion's world reset machine, which would also mean that Alison would still have her powers, but it doesn't totally explain how Luther that is 100% human again, or how Diego's fingers and Five's arm have returned. And thanks to this cryptic final scene where we see Ben riding the subway to a stop in the financial district of Seoul, Korea, I think that in season 4 we'll be seeing doppelgangers. The clues are subtle, but notice how this Ben doesn't have a scar on his face, implying that it isn't Sparrow Ben, plus his hairstyle is different. The scene is also a callback to the opening scene of season 3, where a young Korean girl on the subway is impregnated by the magical lights and gives birth immediately. Whether Ben was born that way in this new timeline we don't yet know, and therefore we can't be sure whether this Ben has any powers. After all, Hargreaves may well have decided that he didn't need to release any magic lights this time after the adjustments he'd made to the timeline with the machine at the Oblivion. I think this final scene is also pointing to the idea that in Season 4, we'll be getting doppelgangers for the other Umbrella Academy members as well. Remember how at the start of Season 3, there was specific mention by Five of how they could expect to meet a copy of themselves in the new timeline. Dad didn't adopt us as babies, but those babies still existed here. Odds are we each have identical versions of ourselves. Our doppelgangers probably aren't even in the same time zone as us. That never happened in Season 3 because the Umbrella's mother all died before they gave birth. But I think the point of Five bringing up the subject was to set up the idea for Season 4. In other words, it's basically Chekhov's doppelgangers. If the Umbrella Gang's powers do return and the doppels also have powers, it could be fun if they get into an argument or fight with themselves, much like Five did in Season 2. Another theory I have about how the team might regain their powers is with the help of a Televator. As I mentioned earlier, this machine can not only travel through time and space, but also between dimensions, meaning that they could try and return to their old universe before it was Kugelblitzed, get back their old powers and then stop the apocalypse. A hint at this idea might be the fact that they came into this new universe via the door of an elevator from the Hotel Oblivion. So could that elevator itself be a secret Televator with a hidden activation switch. 
Also to be revealed in season 4 is why Sloane is missing in the final scene, given she was with the others at the moment that Alison pressed the button. I don't think she's been written out of the show, especially given that Luther has run off looking for her, and I suspect the opening scene of her reading a travel book with the Leaning Tower of Pisa on the cover is a hint that she's ended up somewhere else, perhaps Italy. And we know when she was with Luther, she talked about wanting to get away. I know there are better places out there in the world. One day. I want to see them all. I'm also curious to see what happens with Lila and Diego, especially as she's pregnant, and whether they'll end up having a super baby. Another question is how is Luther back at all given he died? Did the ghostly spirit of him that Klaus conjured up at the Oblivion mean he could be reborn into the new world? Klaus chases after Luther, so there's something between the two of them that will be explained in season 4. In fact, there were some neat clues very early on that predicted how both Klaus and Luther would end up together in the afterlife, something I explain in my Season 3 Easter Eggs and Things You Missed video, which I'll be uploading next. I'll add a link here and in the description as soon as it's ready. So movie lovers, what do you think about the third season of The Umbrella Academy? And do you have any theories about what will happen next? Comment with your thoughts below. Next, tap here to discover all the incredible easter eggs and little details hidden in season 3. And if you liked this video, do leave a thumbs up. Thanks for enjoying The Umbrella Academy with me, and hope you have a marvellous movie-loving week. yippee ki movie lovers!